let's talk about pump performance curves. We've seen the pump head, which is essentially doing a mass and energy balance on the pump, suction, and the discharge. In this case, we're going to do pretty similar to this, but this was for only one volumetric flow rate. In the pump curve, we're going to do very a various amount of volumetric flow rates. So it's pretty similar to the case in the system curve. If you recall, it's almost the same. The only thing that changes is that the balance is done in the pump and not in the system. And please try to imagine what will happen if we increase the flow rate with the head of the pump. And what will happen if we decrease? So how do you expect the curve to behave? That's very useful. Uh, that's a very useful question, sorry guys. Uh, why will we want to decrease the flow rate? Well, many times you need to shut down or you are decreased because you have no demand or you need to decrease your flow rate and production because you have a lot of inventory and you have no space. Why would you increase it? Well, of course, because you want to increase inventory or you're increasing sales, so you want to sell more or even in a revamp. So, let's imagine this volumetric flow rate. If we change volumetric flow rate, what will increase right here? This is our pump head. Recall that we are doing the balance right here. Sorry about that. Uh, we have the head of the pump. So Q does the pressure, atmospheric pressure here and here changes? I don't think so. Does the height of the tanks changes? No. Does the height changes right here? No. So there is no changing height. Will the velocity change? Yes. And one very important part we didn't include in this equation is the friction. Friction will also increase depending on the velocity. And just to let you know guys, we will have many pump heads with respect of volumetric flow rate because one volumetric flow rate will give you one velocity and you will be able to calculate one velocity head and one uh, energy loss with one velocity. So imagine we could have many pump heads for many uh, flow rates, imagine we will have flow rate and a pump for many flow rates. Given Q, we will get many head. Uh, we're going to graph the x axis, our volumetric flow rate, which is normally measured in gallons per minute or liters per second. And in the y axis, we're going to have our pump head, which is typically measured in meters or feet, even though this might be joules per kilogram. But we're going to use the length notation and this famous graph once you make the calculation on all the Q or volumetric flow rates and all the pump head developed by the pump uh, we will call this the pump performance curve so before actually doing the curve I want you to try to imagine the shape of the graph and what will happen if you increase volumetric flow rate what will happen if you decrease it and recall that we are doing the pump head and not the system head. So this is very very important concept. How is it going to be the graph? Is it going to be concave? Is it going to be a straight line? Or maybe power to the second power such as parabola or it will be logarithm? What do you imagine? So this could be linear, maybe concave, concave like this or concave like this one. What do you expect guys? And to do this, you will have to do the balance in the pump suction. So probably you will have a flow rate of mass with density, you change it to volumetric flow rate, various volumetric flow rates, and then you start calculating the discharge and suction differences. This number is almost static and it's a measured data. The velocity in the suction and the velocity on the discharge, this will definitely change with respect to volumetric flow rate and you will have to calculate the well include it but you need to include the efficiency of the loss of 
due to friction and then calculate the pump head which is just this value and this right here because this is going to be probably also a huge difference but let's do a small exercise for the next system we have this balance and this pump uh, we have inlet and outlet pressures we have the velocity involved due to the piping here and the piping here the friction loss considered is in the friction so that's why in the previous example we didn't need to calculate the friction loss even though you can do it you can ignore it because we can send the friction to the efficiency factor which is many times considered in this efficiency and ignore the efficiency actually this is so small for example maybe 30 centimeters so compared to a huge change in pressure you might ignore it so this is the experiment I did. I proposed several mass flows, then calculate several volumetric flow rates, then change that to liters per minute just to have a better uh, understanding. Then calculate the velocities in the suction, the velocities in the discharge, the change in pressures, the head developed, which is essentially change in pressure. DP the velocity head which is only the velocity to the square and yeah that's joule per kilogram and I divide it by gravity in order to get it by meters so what I want you to do is to this will be our x axis and this will be our y axis I want you to graph these values and this is not that beautiful but normally a curve is something like this or even concave like this uh, this is a little bit concave you can see different values because it's real data and yeah this is our head in meters this is our flow rate in meters per second and this is what I wanted to show you in this exact video now we are going to change many many stuff in pumps we one thing that we can so guys probably you're wondering where do I get all the material I use for example graphs uh, tables or whatever data I've been using through and I got all the material I'll use in the course in the library section so for example you need any graph chart or whatever media you need it's included in here go to here and you will be able to for example find out where I get the density of common liquids where I got ASME pipe sizing where I get K values for fitting and valves where or how I calculate vapor pressure and go to the incompressible flow course and eventually you gotta click register and change the impeller diameter we could change the operation the speed and many other stuff these i have them in the course right here go to apply fluid dynamics and part number one go to the library and you will find a lot of exercises such as this excel data and you will try to understand it and as you get started on how to change all the head and so on you will get more comfortable with the pump curve so let's do a little analysis on the pump curve why is it concave down compared to the one of the system the system was something like this going concave up and this is something like this try to understand why why as flow rate increases the head of the pump decreases explain it to yourself and well, of course, we're going to explain it later, but try to explain it to yourself first. What I wanted to show you also is that there are many other types of curves. For example, this is one pump, and this other pump. As you can see, this pump right here is very steep, and this pump right here is very flat. For example, all the pumps that are very steep, for example, like this. Will, rely, uh, will fall into one category and all the pumps that are very flat will go into another category so this is very common they will tell you find out the steep uh, uh, pumps and the flat pumps so this is due to high friction and this is low friction and the average or standard will be I don't know maybe this one right here which is not that excited not that flat and not that steep so let's make an analysis on this curve. You can see there is a there is very low flow rate and it's very high on head. 
So you do the ratio between head and volumetric flow rate, you're going to see that there's a lot of change of head with respect of volumetric flow rate. So if you change from 1 to 4, that is 4 times, is almost a change of 12 units of head. For the other side, if we have this flat curve means that we can manage a lot of flow, so that's an advantage, you can uh, have a high flow range but this the head is going to be small so you need to know if the system what type of system do you have is it flexible enough because the only operation points are this one right here maybe you need to operate one point right here and actually one special point that I want to remark is this one right here this is the only point in which both pumps will de deliver the same head and will have the same flow rate Actually, they have a special point right here. When the steep curve uh, intersects the flat curve in the design point, this is a very unique point in which both pumps may be using. So you have, let's say, a system curve right here. You could either say, what do I prefer, having a high ratio between head and flow rate, or I want to uh, my system to be very flexible, so having, I don't know, maybe one day I operate one gallon per minute and the other day I operate five gallons per minute. What is that you want and what is that you need? Okay, so just keep that in mind guys and we are going to continue with the construction of this type of diagrams for each type of pump. So first things first, the pump curve diagram includes the head of this, let's say of the pump and the volumetric flow rate that goes through the pump. The last exercise we did was for a fixed pump. And what do I mean with fixed is essentially that the impeller's diameter was fixed. So we choose one diameter, let's say six inches, and we work with that. We model that, and that is only this curve. And at what velocity was the impeller rotating? We also had that, it was 3550. So actually this is for this kind of, or this unique specific uh, operation. So for a flow rate, I get this pump head. So what will happen if I change my diameter? The head of the pump will change. What will happen if I, if I change the angular velocity? The head of my pump will change if I maintain my volumetric flow rate. So. This is what I was telling you. This is done for a specific diameter of impeller and a velocity of impeller. So just take that into consideration because we're going to see what happens when we start changing this. Recall that for every amount of volumetric flow rate, we got only one amount of head. Because many times some students do something like this and this is impossible because you have two points and this is not possible you cannot have one volumetric flow rate and two heads so just keep that in mind and let's continue with the pump diagram construction this was a free preview you want to get full access go to my incompressible flow course the link is in the description of the video you will get all access not only that you get a very straightforward uh, user-friendly interface so for instance you were analyzing or studying pumps you have it here the pump block and then you have the sections if you're for example studying the types of pumps you can go here and you have all the classes right here not to mention that you also have introduction and conclusion of every one of these so for instance if you were studying positive displacement pumps the video is right here if you were studying positive displacement pumps in rotatory and reciprocal are also included here Centrifugal pumps, which is a very important topic in this course, you have it right here.